Hi everyone and welcome back to case 13 of our brain tumor board review. Today we're looking at a 60 year old man who has episodes of lip smacking and arm movement. The symptoms sound a little bit like seizures, so maybe we think about a tumor. Here we have some images from an MRI through the level of the midbrain and the anterior temporal lobes. The abnormality is a little bit subtle here. On the left we have a flare. In the middle we have a gradient. On the right we have a T2 with fat saturation. It's subtle to see the abnormality. I'm going to move on to some additional images that will maybe give you a little bit better look. Whew, or maybe not. This is a pre-contrast T1 and post-contrast T1. We're looking at a little bit of a subtle abnormality here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue. I want you to look at this right temporal lobe here. Maybe it's a little bit asymmetric. Now in the coronal images, maybe you can see that a little bit better. We have a coronal flare, coronal T2, and coronal T1. Again, you see maybe, maybe you see a little bit something there. Your question is what's the most likely diagnosis in this case? The patient has seizure-like symptoms and kind of an ill-defined abnormality in the medial temporal lobe. Your second question is what is the descriptor commonly applied to this lesion? Does it have a dural tail? Does it assist with a nodule? Does it have cortical expansion? Or is it bubbly? Uh, this is a DNET or a dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor. These are benign grade one slow growing tumors that usually occur in the temporal lobes. Uh, the locations are commonly in the cortical gray matter. So it'll be uh, kind of around the amygdala and hippocampus. They tend to be pretty well demarcated. The characteristic that goes with them or the, the term that's used to describe them is bubbly. And uh, these can sometimes have hemorrhage or enhancement, but they're, it's pretty rare uh, for these low-grade tumors. Now here we see the coronal T2 shows it best. You've got this kind of multi-lobulated uh, lesion in the medial temporal lobe here, kind of going into the hippocampus there. On flare, you can see again, it's sort of ill-defined, kind of expansile there. Uh, on T1, you definitely see it's a, the medial temporal lobe is expanded there, but uh, not, not a whole lot uh, going on there. Here's your pre and post contrast, and you see there's no enhancement of this lesion. So you've got a medial temporal lesion with no enhancement. And so we gotta be thinking about low grade tumors like ganglioglioma, DNET, maybe PXA or pilocytic astrocytoma. Uh, so the descriptor that I said is associated with this lesion, like I said, is that it's bubbly. And so that's the DNET. Gangliogliomas are known for expanding the cortex. Here's a couple of lesions that are known for being assist with a nodule, ganglioglioma. Uh, pilocytic astrocytoma and PXA, and uh, dural tails really are PXAs and meningiomas. Uh, here we have to get back and think a little bit about our uh, differential for minimally enhancing cortical tumors. Uh, we think about whether they are well defined, uh, and the well defined lesions are DNETs, gangliogliomas, and PXAs. If they're ill defined, we want to think about uh, low and intermediate grade gliomas, kind of depending on how much enhancement we're seeing. We've seen this chart before, and this is kind of an approach to cortical temporal tumors. Uh, if you kind of go through this flow chart, like I said, if it's ill-defined, you're thinking about low-grade gliomas, astrocytomas, and oligodendrogliomas. They tend to be larger, a little more expansile. Here you see an example where this left uh, temporal lobe is kind of expanded and ill-defined. If you don't have, uh, Ill, if it's not ill-defined, it's pretty well-defined. If you don't have enhancement, it's a little bit bubbly looking like in this case you're thinking about a DNET. If you do have enhancement, it's kind of minimal nodular. So here you have a lesion again in the medial temporal lobe, a little cystic portion, a little nodular portion. Think about ganglioglioma. And if you see lesions that are more heterogeneous, maybe they have a dural tail like you see here, think about PXA or pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma. Thanks for tuning in for this case 13 and learning a little bit more about this cortically based tumor. Uh, there are going to be more cases coming up, so be sure to like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel, check out our website at learnerradiology.com. Thanks, everyone.